Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Cecil here. Now, if you're like me, I opened up Blender for the first time one month ago. However, before that, I was so interested in the program itself, I was just too nervous, too scared, and didn't know what to do to actually get involved in it. In today's video, we go over importing, movement, render engines, cameras, scene setup. I go over pretty much everything to hopefully get you started. So without further ado, let's just get started. Okay, so let's get started. These four sites I find myself using the most when getting around Blender. First one is known as Sketchfab. It's a really awesome one. Where you can search up any kind of asset, for my instance, a mountain, select downloadable, select a free one, and you can check it out by rotating within the actual website itself and download it. Next is TurboSquid. Sort of the same premise as Sketchfab itself, where you basically search around for some really cool assets. However, this site may actually tend to have a little bit more stronger models and probably a little bit higher quality, but also probably not that many free ones, but enough to actually get started. Then and lastly, my favorite is Mixamo, where you can upload your own model as well as for the fact they also have models and then select from a library of really awesome animations such as like grabbing, falling, standing, sitting, whatever you might be looking for. This site probably has it. And I want to throw this in here as well. It's actually a plugin known as Blender Kit. This is actually probably the coolest plugin I have found so far with free materials. And to actually add in plugins is pretty easy. Head over to Edit, Preferences, add-ons and install them there. If you're like me, you like a lot of distortion or texture, these materials for me has been perfectly just also not sponsored by the way, but they've been really good to me. Now let's make sure you guys know some essentials when opening up Blender, like importing, movement, and render engines. When you're importing files, be sure you're selecting the correct file format from whatever the file type that you downloaded. Mainly with the sites that I gave you, .obj, .blender, and .fpx will probably be the most common. So if you find yourself struggling with a recently downloaded model, be sure you're selecting the right file format. Now when it comes to movement, these are your essentials. To rotate your camera, camera 360 degrees, click and hold your middle mouse button and move your mouse around. As where shift plus middle mouse button will actually move around your canvas. Control plus middle mouse button will zoom you in and out with moving your mouse up and down, or you can use your scroll wheel. Your move tool will actually be the third tool on the left hand side, rotation tool being under it, scale following that below that as well, and transform will actually do it all in one tool. Now for your render engines, I find there's actually two most commonly used ones, EV and Cycle. Where the main difference in render styles I notice is shadow distance and depth. Cycle is actually being the one with a more stronger and noticeable depth without any further adjustments. Personally, I actually use cycles and I also just think it looks a lot better. When you're actually in your cycles under properties, I use around two to 300 samples on my viewpoint render with denoise actually checked. While I've actually kept my final render at 4096 when rendering a final still image. Leaving your viewpoint render settings at two to 300 samples will allow you to see some sort of final image if you were to change your viewport to the last box being rendered. However, make sure you head over to edit, properties, select system, and check both your GPU and CPU if you guys do have both. Then head back over to your render properties, choose device and change it to GPU compute. Then your render should be a lot faster in your final and in your viewport. So now that I feel like you guys know some of the essentials, let's say you guys actually have a scene going for yourselves and you need to understand or how to navigate the camera. So as I mentioned before briefly, to change your viewport in Blender is in the top right. You have choices between wireframe, solid, material, and rendered. You can also split your viewing scenes by heading into layout, right clicking near the top of your timeline, and having the choice between a vertical or horizontal split. This is actually where you would see a lot of people have one side of the camera being on rendered and the other side being on solid moving freely around the editing scene. To actually join your areas back, right click on the split and choose join. Either joining left or right. The one that is highlighted will be the main screen again. Now adding a camera is actually pretty easy. The shortcut shift plus A will bring up a table with a lot of your addable content. This is where you can go ahead and select your camera. When moving your camera around, you want that certain frame to be the spot. The shortcut control alt numpad zero will actually be your savior in setting the camera's angle for your final render. Now, if you guys do not have a numpad like myself at the moment, head over to Edit, Preferences, Input, and select Emulate Numpad. Now you guys can just hit the regular zero and you're good to go. Of course, that works as well if you guys are looking to add another camera in or save multiple angles. Okay, so next is scene setup. With scenes, most people can actually benefit from an HDRI. Those can be added by selecting a camera that you added, head over to the world properties, select color and change it to environment texture. Then head up top and select the shading tab. Now be sure to change your viewpoint from object to world. Then under the environment texture, open up and then select the HDRI you just downloaded. And if you don't wanna see the HDRI scene, under this little drop down, you can uncheck scene world or scene lights, just uncheck scene world. Usually at this point as well, I add in a sun using the same shortcut shift A under light and rotate it on an angle to get some shadows pretty fast. 
Point Light will sort of act as a sun, but only in a certain spot and will not control the whole scene. Spotlight will actually act as a spotlight to create more of a cone shape. And lastly, Area will cover more of an area or a room with a shape of a spread light. Now for some bonus shortcuts you'll use pretty often, using G on your key will remove your object pretty freely to place or tweak, while R is to rotate and double tapping R will rotate at 360 degrees. And to place your new orientation, you just select on your mouse. Now, truly all that is left is to get familiar with the actual program and get over your anxiety of the new program itself. However, really being sure you ask yourself what it is you're looking to create. Personally, all I do right now is what I literally just showcased. I drag in my 3D objects I find on one of the sites and compose a piece with very basic lighting and honestly do most of the post work in Photoshop. Now, I will say though, there's three key things I keep in mind when actually creating a really, really good composition and how I got from this to this in literally only a week of difference of time. Those three things are scale, environment, and texture. Any of these ideas can actually really help you perform a really solid render in the very end. Scale being the things of making things feel larger than life. Your environment being the thing set by these lights that you put in your scene. And then lastly, with texturing your projects with really small objects to complement a certain area, or even use a rough material to get a more physical sense of the word. And that's basically it. That's all I generally have and all I've learned up to this very, very moment where I have made my favorite piece so far that a lot of people seem to enjoy as well. I'll be the first one to admit why I never opened up Blender for the first time until last month. And it was simply because I just, I just didn't know what to do, but hopefully this tutorial breaks down all the things that needed to help me at least get started and at least navigate and get involved in the program itself. And maybe you want to even comment down some really helpful tips for some new users in Blender. If you guys are an experienced Blender user yourself, you know, I can use it too. But with that being said, it's of HQ out. You're going to get a key smiling, stay positive and stay freaking brother guys. Let much love. Peace. And enjoy your day.